हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टूडेज टॉपिक इज गिफ्ट एडजॉपन आइसोदम इन प्रीवियस वीडियोस वी हैव अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द फ्रेंडली एडजॉपन आइसोदम एंड लैंग्यूर एडजॉपन आइसोदम ऑल ऑफ देम आर बेस्ड ऑन द एडजॉपन ऑफ द गैस ऑन द सॉलिड सरफेस एंड इन दिस वी विल अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द एडजॉपन ऑफ ए सॉल्यूट फ्रॉम द सोल्यूशन बाई अ सॉलिड एडजॉर्बेंट so the adsorption of a solute from the solution is quite different than the adsorption of the gas on the solid surface for this the thermodynamics the quantitative analysis of the thermodynamics of the adsorption of the solute from the solution was firstly given by j w gibbs in 1878 so this isotherm is known as the gibbs adsorption isotherm as it is a isotherm so the whole the process takes place at the constant temperature now here we see that there is a beaker in which there is a liquid and it is a two component system it means there is a liquid at in which a solute is dissolved there is also a solute which it dissolved in this liquid so there are two components one is a liquid that we will call one and another is a solute that we call number 2 now the surface tension of the solute is is smaller as compared to that of the liquid the surface tension of the solute is lesser as compared to the liquid so this solute will decrease the surface free energy of the liquid it means it will decrease the surface tension of the liquid so what will happen there will be a difference in the concentration of the solute in the liquid in the bulk and in the surface this is the surface of the liquid so the concentration of the solute will be quite different at the bulk as compared to that in the as compared to the surface that in the bulk so what happens as the surface tension of the solute is smaller as compared to liquid so it tends to accumulate on the surface these solute particles tends to accumulate on the surface of the liquid now for a two component system as we have said one is the solute and another is the liquid we will call them one and two so for the two component system the free energy gibbs free energy is given by g is equal to n1 mu1 plus n2 mu2 here n1 and n2 is what these are the number of moles of the liquid and the solute and mu1 and mu2 are the chemical potentials of the liquid and the solute now the change in the free energy by the adsorption of one component it means solute we can define it by g is equal to n1 mu1 plus n2 mu2 plus gamma sigma here gamma is the surface energy and sigma sigma is the surface area if we differentiate this equation then our equation becomes dg is equal to n1 d mu1 plus mu1 d n1 plus n2 d mu2 plus mu2 d n2 plus gamma d sigma plus sigma d gamma this we will call our first equation now we know that the free energy is a function of three independent variables the variables are temperature pressure the number of moles of one component and number of component number of moles of second component and sigma it means the surface area so if we differentiate it with respect to them then the equation becomes tg is equal to del z upon del t and at constant p n1 n2 sigma dt plus del z upon del p at constant t n1 n2 sigma dp plus del z upon del n1 at constant temperature pressure n2 and sigma dn1 plus del z upon del n2 at constant temperature pressure n1 sigma dn2 plus del z upon del sigma at constant temperature pressure n1 and n2 d sigma here what we have do we have to differentiate with each of them each of independent variables with cons with remaining all of other variables constant so we will differentiate with each of them and keeping the other com other variables constant so we get this type of equation so according to the thermodynamics it means if we have studied in the thermodynamics we all know that the differentiation of the free energy with respect to temperature is known as the minus s it means minus of the entropy del z upon del p at constant t n1 n2 sigma 
इट विल बी नोन एज द वी एंड डेल जी अपॉन डेल एन वन इट विल बी नोन एज द म्यू वन डेल जी अपॉन डेल एन टू इट विल बी नोन एज म्यू टू एंड डेल जी अपॉन डेल सिग्मा इट विल बी नोन एज गामा सो वी कैन पुट दियर वैल्यूज सो दैट वी विल गेट डी जी इज इक्वल टू माइनस एस टी टी प्लस वी डी पी प्लस म्यू वन डी एन वन प्लस म्यू टू डी एन टू प्लस गामा डी सिग्मा सो इट बिकम्स अवर इक्वेशन सेकेंड नाउ we have done all the process at the constant temperature and constant pressure it means our dt value will be equal to 0 and at constant pressure dp will be 0 so in this equation dt is equal to 0 so this term becomes 0 now see dp is equal to 0 so this term also becomes 0 so we will put their values 0 and 0 so now our equation becomes like dg at constant t and p is equal to mu1 dn1 plus mu2 dn2 plus gamma d sigma this becomes our equation number 3 now if we compare our this equation with the equation number 1 you can see that you can pause the video and reverse the video you can see that if we compare it with the equation number 1 we can find out that in the in the equation number 1 there was three and other terms but in this equation there are only three terms so all other three terms will be equal to zero that must should be equal to zero so we can write that n1 d mu1 plus n2 d mu2 plus sigma d gamma will be equal to zero so it becomes our equation number 4 okay till then we have studied whole the process that was happening on the surface of the solution now we see what happens in the bulk of the liquid in the bulk of the liquid we will show the n1 and n2 by these signs n1 not and n2 not these are the number of the moles of the liquid and the solute in the bulk now in the bulk we will not use the surface tension or surface energy terms so sigma d gamma we will not use that term here so our equation now becomes n1 not d mu1 plus n2 not d mu2 is equal to 0 this is the equation that will be in the bulk of the liquid now we know that in the equilibrium when the system is in equilibrium then the chemical potential of any component is same in both the phases it means the chemical potential will be same in the bulk as well as in the surface so we can say that either the value of d mu1 and the change in the chemical potential if we disturb the equilibrium if we are disturbing the equilibrium and attain it again then the change in the chemical potential will also be same in the bulk as well as on the surface so we can say that the d mu 1's value or that of the d mu 2's value in the bulk as well as on the surface will be same so we can write that n1 not d mu 1 will be equal to minus n2 not d mu 2 we will write here the value of d mu 1 in the term of d mu 2 so our equation becomes d mu 1 is equal to minus n2 not upon n1 not d mu 2 now we will substitute this value of d mu 1 in our equation that is for the surface it means equation number 4 that was for surface and we will put this value because the value of d mu 1 will be same for the bulk as well as for the surface so we will put this value so after putting this value our equation becomes n1 times Minus n2 not upon n1 not d mu2 plus n2 d mu2 plus sigma d gamma is equal to zero. Okay, then rearranging this equation gives n2 minus n1 n2 not divided by n1 not d mu2 plus sigma d gamma is equal to zero. Now we can take this term to this side, so it becomes minus sigma d gamma, and afterwards we will put this. on the on this side by dividing it and this term we will get on this side so our equation becomes minus d gamma upon d mu2 is equal to n2 minus n1 n2 not divided by n1 not divided by sigma now if we look carefully this equation in this equation there is a term in the bracket this is n1 n2 not divided by n1 not this term this term is the amount of the solute n2 not 
associated with the liquid and were not in the bulk because it is n2 not so this is the solutes amount that is associated with the liquid in the bulk and other term that is n2 it denotes the amount of solute that is associated with the liquid in the surface so this term n2 minus n1 n2 my not divided by n1 not what it will show this term is the amount of solute associated with the liquid in the surface and this the amount of solute that is associated with the liquid in the bulk so this term will show the excess concentration of solute on the surface and if we divide it by the sigma that is the surface area it means this term the equation becomes this n2 minus n1 n2 not divided by n1 not divided by sigma this term will show the excess concentration of solid per unit area of the surface because we have divided by the surface area so we get the excess concentration of solute per unit area of the surface and we denote it by the another symbol this symbol we use here and this symbol is called gamma and we have used a subscript 2 so it becomes gamma 2 so this is the excess concentration of solute so our equation becomes gamma 2 is equal to minus d gamma upon d mu 2 this is the derivation that we have obtained in the gibbs absorption isotherm so the further the chemical potential of the solute we know that is given by mu 2 is equal to mu 2 star plus rt ln a2 natural log of a2 here this mu 2 star or mu 2 not what is it it is the chemical potential of the pure solute after differentiating this equation our equation becomes d mu 2 is equal to rt d natural log of a2 now here one one thing should be noted that the d mu 2 star will be equal to 0 so our equation becomes like this now if we put the value of d mu 2 in our equation that we have derived for the excess concentration then our equation becomes excess concentration gamma 2 is equal to minus 1 upon rt del gamma upon del natural log of a2 at constant temperature afterwards the equation becomes like gamma 2 is equal to minus a2 upon rt del gamma upon del a2 at constant t here this a2 is the activity of the solute and if the solution is very dilute then we know that the solution behaves ideally so we can replace the activity by the concentration of the solute it means we can replace a2 by the c2 so when the solute is very dilute then our equation becomes gamma 2 is equal to minus 1 upon rt del gamma upon del ln c2 at constant temperature or we can write gamma 2 is equal to minus c2 upon rt del gamma upon del c2 at constant at constant temperature these both the equations are known as the gibbs adsorption isotherm and from this equation we can calculate the excess concentration of the solute on the surface from this equation we know that for the solutes that lowers the surface tension or the surface energy of the liquid they have the tendency to accumulate on the surface it means for them the excess concentration is always positive such in the case of the soaps when the soap is dissolved in the water then it tends to accumulate on the surface for them gamma 2 is positive while for the solutes that raises the surface tension it means they have the tendency to go in the bulk they increase the surface energy so they go in the bulk for them the excess concentration is negative such this is the case of the inorganic salts when inorganic salts are dissolved in the water they go in the bulk so they increases the surface tension or surface energy so this is all about the gibbs adsorption isotherm thank you